Now we're going to look at embeddings. Embeddings are very important for large language models. This is a way to convert your, your text into a, a vector that we can then use to compare it. So if you want to compare two strings, that becomes very difficult. You can check to see if the two strings match exactly. But how do you really capture if the two strings are talking about the same thing? Embeddings let you be able to do that. So you can convert each of these two strings into an embedding and then check to see how close those two vectors actually are. And we have a whole host of ways that we use to compare which vectors are closer to, to each other. So let's go ahead and take a look at what we have here. You'll see we have this code at the beginning that will install the necessary things. We're installing ChromaDB. We're going to use OpenAI actually to perform the embeddings for us. You need a API key to be able to do this with OpenAI. So I show you earlier in this course how to get one of those keys. You should put it into the key section of your Google Colab so that it can get access to it. So then we go ahead and we install all of the needed packages. So when you're using OpenAI, and this will be different for other providers that you might be using. This course focuses on OpenAI, but it, we are using Langchain. So there is some commonality there at least. But there's two text embeddings that I'm recommending at this point. Now, this may change in the course as we go into the future because newer and less expensive ones will come on. So you may see that I have two different ones here, just depending on as these are added to it. If it's just minor changes, I'm probably not going to update the actual video, but I will update the code in here so that everything remains current. But the two that we currently have are the large and the small. This gets into performance and accuracy and cost. So in an ideal world, maybe you always would use large, but large takes longer to generate those embeddings. So if you're trying to do something real time, large is probably not a good idea. Large will give more highly accurate of embeddings so that if two things are really, two sentences are really pretty similar, they will have a very similar embedding. Computational resources, so large will definitely cost you more money than small, and then just latency and, and throughput. And I have some general recommendations here, but for this course, I recommend we always use the text embedding small. And to make use of it through Langchain, and again, we're using Langchain just so that this stuff stays at least reasonably compatible if we were to switch, say, to from OpenAI to maybe Bedrock or, or Gemini for Google. This creates it, and then we can basically begin this. So I am going to create two of these. You can see that I am creating L1, which is just, just a dog, uh, just a three-letter word, and then something longer than a three-letter word. So we're going to have both of those. And then I perform the embedding. And then I'm going to print out the lengths. And oh my gosh, look at the lengths. First of all, these two things are exactly the same. Now, if you've worked with vector comparisons, that shouldn't surprise you a whole lot because if they were different lengths, it becomes much harder to compare them. But that's the idea of it. No matter how large or how small is something that you're putting into this, it's going to be that 1536 for this particular embedding model. Other models may very well have a different length, so be aware of that. But what does that actually look like? It's a list, but inside of this list, you can see if I print out L1, which is just dog, you can see that it's just a vector of very precise numbers, usually pretty close to zero. So that is at least what this particular embeddings model looks like. But now maybe you want to compare them. There's a whole bunch of ways that you can um, compare them. I'll tell you right now that the recommended one from OpenAI's Cosine product, which is, or Cosine Similarity, I guess I should say. They're related, but different. So use Cosine Similarity. And it's basically looking at the angle between the two, the two vectors. But there's other ones that you certainly might see as well. Euclidean distance is quite popular as well as our um, 
some of the some of the others. So now we're going to go ahead and create both turn both of these to vectors. The the two that we had before the the dog and then the, the sentence. And now we're going to run it and it can print out some things so we can we can print out the vector see what the length is. Um, those 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 kind of things when we run this function. So here you'll see it prints out the vector. It says the 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 length of the vector that should always be around one. I mean that's the linear algebra kind of concept of of length, and it it, it basically gives you kind of the statistical linear algebra more so sort of statistics on those. And then we can compute the cosine similarity, which is this. Those two sentences are the, the, the word dog and that other sentence. They're not really all that, all that similar. So let's evaluate some of the similarities of strings. So I'm providing this compare string. It needs to have an embeddings model given to it. That's the embeddings model that we're going to use for the two strings. And you can see what it's doing here is it is turning those two strings into embeddings. And then we convert them into NumPy arrays, and then we can calculate the, the dot product on those and return the dot product. So here you can see a machine that helps people cut grass, device with blades to cut plants under it, yeah, lawnmower. Uh, and you can see basically where that similarity was. A high similarity is closer to one, negative one is a very low similarity, so it's, it's a higher, higher-ish one. I could see maybe a trimmer. Could trip, could trip that up, but that is just the two, the two things that I was comparing. And you can see you can compare other things as as well. Like I compare uh, an airplane and a, uh, a grass mower, and it doesn't give nearly as high of a value. So that's a quick introduction into embeddings. We will certainly make use of these as we continue with large language models, and in particular retrieval augmented generation or RAG. So thank you for watching this video and please subscribe so that you don't miss any other part of this course and give the video a like if it was helpful to you. Thank you very much.